Hey, I'm Skylar Woodward, and I'm two-time Moscone Cup MVP, and you're watching Railbirds TV. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy Jones with Railbirds Productions coming to you from the 2020 Derby City Classic. This is a second round match between uh, two great players, Scott Frost and Joshua Filler. Uh, Scott Frost has won the lag and there's one of our sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products and Billiard Shopping Network. I'd like to thank them for being a part of this production. Again, Scott Frost has won the lag. It's a race to three. This is uh, round number two. Lots going on always at the Derby. It'd be interesting, interesting to me to see how Scott plays this match. Um, you would say a prohibited favorite, even though a race to three is greater uh, as Josh is on the table playing pool period. He's definitely got a fighting chance. But we'll see if Scott, you know, when you, when you feel like you're the favorite and you're especially playing a, <clears throat> someone that you know shoots the ball really well and can certainly run eight balls, uh, you tend to play a little tighter than normal. And Scott, Scott will play fairly tight anyways, at, especially tournament style. Now you see Josh lining up what looks like a, like a backwards cut combination. He's got to really hit that with a lot of speed, I think. Uh, for that eight to be possible. He's kind of cutting it back to where it's going to pull a lot. Try and send that eight towards the bottom rail. Really a nice break by Scott overall though. Not sure what Josh is looking at right now playing off the three ball maybe. or now He's kind of looking towards that 11 near the side pocket. Okay, he's looking at the. Okay, he tried to get back over, leaving Scott kind of doubled up. Definitely wanted to leave Scott more on the rail, I would think, though, but he gets something near his hole. Scott kind of has a lot of options from here, meaning he doesn't have to take much, many chances. He could just graze that ball above the 8, the 14, I believe it is. Maybe it's the 10. He's looking at a combination here on the 5-3. Pretty aggressive shot. Yeah, he made it look easy. I'm not sure he came away with anything at all. You can hear a little, little moan from Scott. All right, well, you could hear that in the background, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm not on the clock because I'm in the booth. This is a uh, kind of an ad lib for the commentary. I'm going to look and see what Scott's thinking about here. Maybe playing the eight across. Dangerous shot, though, because he's got to kind of bring the cue ball maybe up into the, the 14 that's near, near the eight there. Is he going to play this? Cross it over and bump, draw into the two. Okay, he's going to not take any chances. And I think Josh doing the correct thing there. Doesn't really have much to play with. Scott's going to just return the same type of shot. Gave him a little more air than he wanted, probably, but... Josh needs to look and see if there's somewhere maybe up the table he can challenge Scott. Don't really see it. That ball near the side pocket isn't much of a worry if he can get up to the middle of the end rail or a little bit left of it. Okay, Scott will probably knock the 8-14 away here and draw back behind the 2. 
I'd like to knock those two balls away if I could, as long as I'm not risking losing the cue ball. Okay, he's going to feather this two and try and nestle him up on the three, but yeah, I think that's more touchy than just elevating on the eight and knocking those away. It's a touchy shot here. I'm not saying it's tough, but the, exactly like that. Not that he's selling out, but he didn't give up. He gave up his position a little bit, meaning he gave Josh a lot more options. Or that be to dig on those two balls, you know, near the spot there, the two stripes, the fifth, fifteen ball maybe. He's kind of looking at those two balls on the low rail for some reason, and those are dangerous to try and move. He's just got to elevate and hopefully leave Scott to where Scott can't see the eight, draw back off of one of those balls. Uh, it's pretty near the cue ball there, just maybe a diamond up from the bottom rail, right in the middle, middle diamond area. That's a nice two railer there and really nice with the cue ball. Because even if he can see the ball nearest his pocket, I'm not sure he can really get shape. So a real nice shot there, and that's that, that room that Scott gave uh gave Josh there by trying to get him up underneath that three and thirteen on the prior shot. So Scott's gonna try and make this ball near the pocket, I believe. Maybe get shape. Hit it pretty well. Not going to like the results. So Scott's in a pickle here. Oh, that's a nice shot there. Real nice. So it's a very containing shot, but Scott knows also. He's got a little lead here now. Maybe he owed one. I don't think so. No, he's got two. But he knows that the way the balls are, Scott's going to have some pressure on him right here playing this game out. He just plays it simple here. That being Josh, maybe nicks the eight and goes up into that upper corner, kind of like on the first diamond where that that ball on Scott's side pocket isn't playable. I'd keep it real simple here. Scott's got issues. He could easily give up the cue ball here in a shot or two and get really in a bad spot. I like him nicking the eight and going up to that middle of the end rail, something like that. I'd let Scott shoot at that ball that's... I think it's the seven ball that's near the uh, the twelve and the one. Yeah, I like him doing this and try and get him on the rail. Of course, that's important. Now he moved the eight a long ways from the hole. If he had to do that, I'm not in love with it as much because now Scott can drop off the two ball and go back behind the eight pretty easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, he's gonna cross this ball over, and that's okay thought he might play off the two a little bit more and this is that's a little more of that decision making uh, all right did he leave something here almost got to be careful if Scott gets wedged behind that seven twelve and one somehow he could have serious issues especially now with the ball up table on Josh's side as well yeah this is what I would have I would have maybe even taken a foul to get there maybe come off the another ball to try and get up on those that being the, the 12 7 and 1 now he's giving up a pretty clean bank on the 11 I believe so that's just a little bit of experience probably getting Josh a bit certainly aren't going to want to leave this shot
And I don't think Scott's really even given Josh much to, you know, wing at. So Josh will have to kick long rail at this ball or maybe come off of the nine, which is just a little below the spot, and maybe kiss into the 11, something like that. He's going to look at a bank shot here. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm surprised he went three rails. He was trying to double him up, and that's a pretty nice shot overall, really. Really nifty. Now Scott's got to be really careful crossing this eight out. It's not going to take much time. And here I'd probably cross this one out lightly. Of course, not to lose the cue ball, but maybe the eight. Ooh, that's... Ooh. I was going to say maybe the eight covers up some banks. Uh, you know, if you get Josh in a bad situation. Kind of keep him off of banking at one. Josh may be a long rail kick and get up behind this, this ball near Scott's pocket. It's real close. Again, this is a round two match from the 2020 Derby City Classic. I'm Jeremy Jones with Railbird Productions. This is Josh Fieler, top five player in the world right now. As far as uh, rotation, Scott Frost, who was a, still a great rotation player, but really was a top top rotation player as well. and Really has become known for his one pocket. Now a uh, one pocket Hall of Famer. Okay, I think it's still worth kicking at maybe. I don't know. Can he not kiss off of that ball that's... I guess that's not any good either. And just coast. I think the 12 ball, or maybe it's the 15 ball that's connected to the 9 there. Maybe guide off the bottom of that and just coast below the 11. He's going to shoot at the 9 some kind of way. Maybe into the 11. Okay. It's all right. Probably held him off of a shot as far as a makeable shot, but he's not, it's not going to get much better from here for Josh. So Scott's got options. He can shoot the nine away. and Scott's looking at this like, is this makeable? But does he really get shape with this? Okay. He's got a bank on the nine. He's got a cut shot on, I think that's the 11 near his pocket. Don't think it'll be much more than the nine ball, unless he wants to cut at the eleven. Nothing wrong with that, but no guaranteed shape there. Oh, he's cutting the four. Gonna be downtown with the cue ball. Scott's feeling pretty, pretty good though. I mean, it didn't take much time to shoot that one in. That was not easy. And you kind of sh shoot that one in, knowing you're going to be long on this ball near the hole. So you just got to get down and bury this one and have a bank on the nine. Oh, he played rail first. That was an interesting shot to me because I didn't, wasn't really sure shape was really possible. But probably tells me he was a lot straighter on that ball than, than maybe we thought. Okay, should just put him underneath the nine ball here, but just mildly banking the A to, oh, he's going to cross this. Yeah. Oof. So five, nothing here. Now can Josh bank at this ball with low left English and draw it back to the end rail and then spin it, maybe break them balls out or get a cut shot on the eight. Like that. Oof. He almost got there. Got another bank, though. It's on the six. He's got a two-railer, possibly, or maybe even a one-railer on the three, also. No reason to pass up this bank on the six. Just kind of figure out how you want to hit it, holding position on the eight. Could come back for a nine-eight combo, but I would just hold for the eight here. I hit it pretty sweet, though.
So Josh Filler on the board here in game one. I might think about getting this ball out of play, the one near the spot. Now there's a ball. problem with that is that 7 and 15 ball looks like it's aimed towards that ball near Josh's pocket. So Scott's going to take a chance removing all three here. Cue ball got away from him a little bit. It's going to give up a cut shot to Josh that I'm sure he'll shoot at. Now, can he kill his ball for, you know, behind what looks like four more that may go towards his pocket? Yeah, I think he can. He's close enough to it. Usually when these guys are close, they can really make the cue ball hold up in a lot of places. Okay, that one looks... He doesn't want to get too far above. Okay, this combo is playable. And that's the one I was talking about earlier. He'll just nip draw off the one. And this is where Josh really, <clears throat> to me, is a pretty amazing guy at such a young age. He's fortunate enough to do a, a somewhat of a round robin format. It was a round robin format. Uh, some eight ball and straight pull uh, AccuStat series that uh, really got to see a lot of Josh at a young age play, play different games, and he was so impressive. Very natural. Now playing for two balls here in game one. It looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, he may have ran this a little long. He'll still bank at it, knowing he can't really give up much. So Josh Filler takes game one. A little friendly uh, gesture there from Scott. Asking Josh if he wanted to place it. Any of them Franks on this match? I think it's Franks in Germany. Pretty good break there. Now Scott, if he can, probably nicks this ball and goes by the ball, behind the ball by Josh's pocket. It's a thin one. Okay, is he going to be pretty good? And you'll notice when you play that shot, you really make sure you kind of hold the object ball where it's really not so bankable near the bottom rail, just in case that cue ball leaks out. Don't, he could kick bank this ball, and a lot of guys would actually. Stay aggressive in this spot. You don't have to kick bank it with a lot of speed, but kick bank it over, meaning coming to this bottom rail where his cue's laying and try and play that ball across. Now he's just going to nick this 11 and go behind the, the 6. Okay, that's a little light. So Scott's going to, not only did Josh, that's kind of what you're looking to do when you're getting out of the break, have your opponent move the ball away from his own pocket, which is what happened here with Josh. No, Scott hit that pretty light. The cue ball didn't really get where he wanted either. I think he was a little worried about the kiss. Yeah, and Josh is doing the right thing here knowing he can just stun the cue ball straight across and take a real good chance of making this long railer. Uh, he caught the point. Still going to be, well, I don't know. Let's see what Scott wants to do on this six ball here. I think that's a shootable shot to me. Close to it. Go right off the balls back into the three. Oh, he didn't catch that ball. He overcut it. Okay, so bread and butter filler knocks this five in. 
Brings the cue ball all the way down for position and maybe knocks the six in. I wouldn't even worry about the six though. I'd just play position here. You're probably going to get safe on the bottom rail if you miss. Meanwhile, this kid, he just said miss. probably come up up he probably won't go into the stack here use the four ball and he has the 11 if he can wiggle a few away when he shoots the four and use the 11 to gain some more position and maybe just get this pretty big lead here this may have gotten a little funny if he's got just a portion of the pocket now that camera angle is pretty good kind of tells me he's got a big pocket Ooh, squeaked it in. Yeah, nice where he kept the draw on the cue ball there. A lot of people let up on the stroke. And the cue ball glances and falls to the bottom rail, coming away with not much of a shot. I'd go ahead and play that ball and go three rails for this bank, I think. Unless there's not much in the stack. I don't think I play the bank now. I want to secure this this ball first. And he looked at the stack, so I think he's going to go three rails. Is he trying to break the pack? I think he can hit right before the side. Oh, he's going to play for the eight. May be able to follow off this ball right here and get position, or is he just going to hold him up? Uh, not bad. A little bit of a combination that may be playable towards Scott's pocket. I'm not sure. Thing is, he knows he can't be filler or anything. Filler only needs two, but just a simple fact the way he pockets the ball, just like the shot he made to start this run. Okay, he's going to try and move this over and come. Oh, he was kicking. Okay, nice shot. That's all he could do. So Scott will spot the one he had. Put our ball count back six to nothing. That's another thing you think about when you're playing a certain type of player, like if you're Scott playing as a pillar in this situation. I oh, hit that great. As you think about, hey, I want this match to last. If, if I get beat, I get beat, but I want this match to last a while. I want to make sure it's trying to find out what filler knows. I gave up a shot here for some now, interesting to me, does Scott do anything with the 9 right now when he cuts this 14 ball? I don't think I would mess with it unless it was just sitting absolutely perfect, or if that's the only way I could stop my cue ball. Otherwise, I might go four rails here. Hate to come off the 9 and not get a shot. Yeah, I like that decision there. As long as you don't make his 9 ball for him. Oh, and he got it out. Decent. This is realistically a game you could steal that ball that's, uh, I believe it's the 10 ball. It's just below the three balls near the spot. But I think if he gets correct on that one, he can open up those balls and steal game number two, entire match at one apiece. Big bank here. hit it nice. He would have liked to have fallen up on That's why you saw his hands just kind of go up in the air. He wanted to get on that 10 now. That looks pretty perfect to me. Yeah, it does. Should push that. What is that? The 7 ball there? Should push that towards the hole enough. Now, what happens with the 2 and the 1? Perfect. Or that's not the 1. Excuse me. It's the 6. 
But Scott Frost should steal game number two here. Just come one rail out for these two balls. at one game apiece, breaking off in game number three. Sponsors, Dabbing Billiard Products and the Billiard Shopping Network. This is Railbirds Productions. I'm Jeremy Jones, coming to you from what was the 2020 Derby City Classic. This is a round two match with both guys undefeated. And now tied at one apiece. Pretty nice break there, and Scott, always an aggressive breaker for the most part, and usually hits it really well, so no reason to stray from that. But at times, I broke the balls different against certain types of players, uh, just because of how dangerous they can be. The filler, the difference is, I'm not sure he's got the knowledge of getting out of these types of situations uh, without an offensive shot. Pretty crafty young man, though, so this is where he maybe wants to look at kicking one rail behind those balls, that being the four ball nearest Scott's pocket. Now he could play this interesting shot. There's the one ball there that's just a little bit below, I think it's the 12. You can play the one into the uh, into the rail, kicking the four out. So you're cutting the one a little bit. And you see this angle here, and then you kiss off the twelve with the cue ball and coast over between the three and the, or kiss off the seven, excuse me, and coast over between the twelve and three and lay on the side rail. This shot is okay. He's going to go off the top side of this ball and come to the end rail. Very good shot that players need to know. It's not one you use all the time, but normally it's one you use uh, when it's a sticky situation. Okay, and actually hit it pretty well besides freezing the cue ball. I've done real well. Now Scott will try to... Is he looking at kicking this ball? That's pretty dangerous. Doesn't have to come out much for filler to be able to cut it, and you're kicking it towards the stack. Man, they could hit a couple balls and leak something out towards Josh's pocket. I like I like Scott taking the tight three railer here. I think let, he's going to kick before the side and spin this softly downward. Got to be careful here. Kind of feel like it's a hard one to scratch on, but can happen. I thought he would just elevate and shoot stun straight forward, banking this ball kind of side rail, bottom rail, maybe back up to the top rail and somewhat towards your pocket. Okay, this is surprising too. A little bit, not saying it's a bad shot, but giving Filler a pretty easy kick at the four. He's got to hit it well and he's got to hit it light, but not something you think he's not going to be able to do. Alright, Filler's going to take a foul back. Smart man. Now we'll see if Scott get, plays a little something. He's going to look immediately at that kick shot now. 
I think it's a hair more scratchable now, but if you hit straight English, it should be fine. Yeah, nice shot. He played it very containing. Did he give up a kick on the four? Just kick right between the 13 and the 14 there into the bottom rail and kick and stick the four up. Oh, he can see the 13. Careful here. Balls could be flying. Yeah. Thought he was going to get a kiss, but he was doing something nice with the cue ball, trying to rearrange some things. A pretty good effort. Scott doesn't have many positives on his side. I mean, he's got a few things that go, but they're not very shootable from a lot of places. Uh, so he's got to be careful here if he decides to go up table with the cue ball and cross the six over or the seven, that ball in the middle. That's probably the best shot, getting something up on his side there. It's a little more threatening. I know it's a little ways from the hole, but it makes sense to make it to where, you know, filler can do something that doesn't require much uh, experience and puts you in a bad spot. Now this cue ball could have stunned a little more for Scott because filler could do something a little bad here as well. Okay, so our first two games were pretty quick overall. A uh, couple, some great shooting, of course always leans towards some quick games, but this, this this one here has the making of being a, a bit longer game. Mm. I'm not sure if he maybe miscued there. I would think he would have wanted to get to the rail and not let Filler see them balls on his side here. He can squeeze him up in the stack pretty good here off the six and maybe even get that one going a little bit two rails towards the hole. He'd have to draw his ball and throw it a bit. You can hear the AccuStats Arena there in the background. He could even draw this one round, draw the cue ball back into the stack. Oh, he hit it nice. Hit it pretty nice. Really good cue ball, like perfect to where Scott can only see a little of the five, if any, near the rail. Scott can kick this ball, though, I believe. Oh, no, he can't. I think there was much question there. I'm sure if Scott said it touched the six cue ball, it certainly touched the six. But when you don't know, you definitely have to inquire. Okay, he wants to keep him off that kick on the 12. May have done that. I don't think he did actually. Yeah, that was dangerous to me a little bit too. I know if he makes the bank on the five, he makes it, but he certainly could shoot it. Looks like he's going into the stack with a cue ball. Yeah, nice shot. Got two on his side, stuck him up pretty good. May have given up a little bit of a twist bank here on the, th what is that, the 11? I think that's the 13 ball. And it's one that could cost you the game if you miss it. Oh, 
Yeah, I don't know if I'd be fooling around with this at all. Made two rail kick and try and get him back behind the three here and the, the ten ball. Or, yeah, something like this maybe. Uh, this is a dangerous situation for Scott. And it's only a race to three here at the Derby. And while we have some long matches, it's still, for these level players, uh, pretty short. So he knows giving up a game here, but putting filler on the hill could be, uh, you know, the match could get out of his hands, kind of. Don't think he's in a situation he has to shoot. Scott's pretty crafty on trying, when he wants to get the cue ball safe, having different ways of doing it. I don't think he can spin it with inside. Okay, he's going to, uh, he didn't get there. That's going to hurt. Yeah, it's a couple of times that he was trying to get somewhere with the cue ball and was a little short with it. I'm not sure if he was trying to nick that ball or just roll it out. But I don't think you're going to see Filler pass up on this 11 ball bank back into the 8. Could pass up on this bank combination. I'm not sure you can really hold the ball and, and where it's safe. Uh, ooh, yeah. I didn't think about this. What about spinning this ball in? Being a lefty, it can reach it real well. It's a hard one not to look at, I'll tell you. Of course, you don't want to bank it hard enough to get the cue ball all the way up to the end rail for safety, and then you miss it. You probably sweep the balls away from your hole, your own pocket. So I think Scott is on a foul. I couldn't blame Josh if he shot this ball. I mean, he's close to it. Especially he can nick the three and coming out and still get a shot on the ten, a bank, another bank. All right, he's going to take a foul into the two balls by the nine and the six. He didn't get there. Or decent. This guy going to try and scramble these two balls away here. A touchy shot being... So close to it with the cue ball. Trying to spin off this. Oh, nice shot. Good effort there. Josh has got a three ball. I think he can see. I'm not sure if he can do much with it. He can bank it over to his side towards the eight. But pretty touchy. Yeah, it's pretty steep, too. Really didn't want to leave Scott much of a shot at all. Okay, he's looking at banking the... 10 into the rail into the back of that ball by near near Scott's pocket. Not bad. Kind of put Scott in a funny position unless Scott wants to soft kick behind this eight. 
Yes, with the, the ten ball the way it is. Ball on the low rail. Hard to move the eight and not give up a bank. So we'll see what Scott wants to do. Looking to see if there's much reward if he does shoot this 14 ball in. All right, here we go. Scott's going to shoot it. He may be able to slow roll this, actually, and hold his ball. All right, he hit a little thick. He's going to give up a shot, I think. Well, it's close. Well, the reason the cue ball didn't get there is he caught the 14 thick to the pocket, so... Filler going to cut this 12 ball. Don't think he's going to shoot this combination. Maybe. He's looking at that 14 ball near Scott's pocket. Touchy little shot right here to remove it and come up the table. He's got to put a little... Uh, he played it soft to try and kiss it like that. Normally you don't want to try and leave the cue ball down table like this, but Scott's got a lot of options now. Banking that, I think, is that 13 back into the stack somehow. Maybe back into the 9-8. Uh... You just never know. Kind of stun on the cue ball below the 12 and over to this long rail behind the 12. Trying to push balls towards his pocket. I don't think he's going to pass on some type of shot like that. Don't think he can get at the 12. I think it's got to be off of a, the 13 ball somehow. One of Scott's bread and butters really controlling the rock and the speed of the object balls. Oh, he played it right into it, so that's a sweet one. So both of them have taken a ball off of what they've owed. Now Scott owes two only and filler one. Looks like to me, Scott, he could level out and get by this three ball, but it's close. He may have to elevate and draw off of this first ball. Is he stunning this? Okay, he did draw off of that first one. He's gotten straight. So not exactly the, the start on the run. Um... Oh, maybe he can draw his ball up here for... And he's got a combination, maybe. On the 13-6 that's playable. Okay, so Scott's on a run of five. He owed three to start this run. He's got two to the positive now, and it's one to one in our match. He's got to spin this a little bit. If not, he any any angle on on the nine ball when he comes up one rail is good, either to break it, the balls out or drop behind maybe the ball near uh, Josh's pocket. Could play for the bank as well. That was curious there because now he's really kind of cut his run off. Can't really afford to go for this bank, I don't think. Well, he's looking at this ball bank here. If he can get Josh doubled up, but can he get shape on anything? Does a three go just in case Scott does bank the five in?
Well, that's a smart shot you can learn something from. Instead of taking any chances or leaving a ball near Josh's pocket with the three and the thirteen doubled up, that was Scott. Because he couldn't he couldn't move it away without kissing it. Uh, couldn't cross it. He could have crossed it to his pocket, but then he's losing the cue ball up table. A real smart shot there with a now a four nothing lead in a short race. Uh, just go ahead and give your opponent that ball, making sure you're not leaving anything near his hole. All right, you shouldn't see much from Scott here. Just feather off these balls and drop down to the bottom rail real lightly. saying he's kind of worried about losing the game with this shot on the eight, but just didn't want to leave filler any, anything really, any options. That's the whole point of, uh, of what Scott's a little upset about. Ooh. Hit it pretty well to hold shape on that nine ball and somewhat safe. So filler's going to get on the positive side of things here in game number three. little shot. I'd have liked to have gotten that cue ball on the rail there, but if I was Scott, it's just because. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's just a... caught a little bit that ball a little thin. He thought the thought the two ball would go up into that, that three and four, uh, 14 ball up there. 15 ball, excuse me. Scott's just got to get these two here and try and create something, maybe something on the one, a bank on the five. May have gotten perfect here to come one rail right into the edge of the 11. Is he going to come two rails and try and get a cut shot on the one, maybe? Hitting right past the side and right back at it. Oh, he tried to come into those balls. This is a steep bank here, but he's on six. Got himself in a pretty nice position in game three. Well, this one definitely does bank. Filler a bank at this and draws the ball. Could get something started here if he buries this one. Might get another bank on the one ball there. Oh, that's what he was banking at to begin with. Excuse me. I think Scott's got a pretty free bank at his pocket here on, on the one. I think anyway, unless it's a kiss. I mean, it's, it's close to a kiss, but don't believe the 11 and 12 played us Josh's pocket at all from those two in the center of the table. Yeah, that's a nice hit. Okay, Josh, uh, excuse me, uh, Scott playing for one ball. Could cut at this if he wanted. He's got to watch out for that corner pocket over there, though, near the four for a scratch. Okay, he got into it real thin, making sure he didn't glance off that that 13. So, looked like this was going to be a pretty, or at least a, a longer game than games one and two, but now shaping up to possibly a very similar game, at least as a length of time. Well, what a great hit. Did he get a scratch in the opposite side? Wow. Might kick and stick the five ball on the right side rail there. Man, this kid can hit him. 
really just disregarding the cue ball, but I don't blame him in that spot. He understands that he's a big underdog to try and move, especially at the ball count the way it is. So I'd probably, if I was coaching him, that's that's probably the correct thing to coach him with. And it'll kind of show you why it's the correct thing to do. May get a couple more banks here if you can bury this one. Uh, a little wide there. Don't think Scott will shoot at this uh, three ball. Looks like he moves the five, five into play maybe. Now he may cut the five. Nah, probably not. You can kick this off the end rail here. Come to the bottom rail and just come up behind it. Okay, he's, he's looking at the three again. Don't really think that's the shot, but you can cross this 13 over a bit. And watch out for the cue ball. Do not want to lose the cue ball or foul in this position. Yeah, that's the shot I like the most. You could give up a bank, but but you're not losing the cue ball. You're going to get a rail. Um, he may have given up a long railer here. I think he did. So the freezer will definitely shoot at this one, I believe. Even if he has to play it two rails and draws a cue ball, but I think he can play it one rail. With a nice pocket speed as well. Didn't really give up the cross corner either. Filler has a nice touch for that cue ball and getting it to rest on the rail when the shot's complete. It's a good sign to becoming a one pocket player, that's for sure. Okay, Scott taking no chances. Could have banked at that one, let the cue ball run a bit. Okay, he's got a two railer, but the problem with this is when you're close to it, it's hard to get enough steam on it to get it there. No reason to take a chance. I almost gave up a long railer here. I think the 13's got him cut off. I don't know. He's looking at maybe like he does have this three ball, and if he does, that's a. It's kind of a big mistake, really. I think he made that one. That's going to end game three. And get Freezer to the lead. Scott Frost leading two to one over Joshua Filler. Yeah, our sponsors, Diamond Bayard Product and the Bayard Shopping Network. Jeremy Jones with Railbird Productions. This is game number four of a round two match from the 2020 Derby City Classic. Joshua Filler breaking the balls here in game number four. Scott Frost with a two to one lead. Really nice break there. You may see a three rail kick here to get up underneath this 11. Could maybe play off of the I think it's the 14 ball. It's just near the spot. Kind of open, maybe bank it back into that. Maybe bank it back into that nine ball. I don't know. I'd like to be real careful here getting out of the break if I'm if I'm Scott. Could one rail kick this, but I, I think the three rail kick's okay. It's close.
pretty nice control. And Scott knew he had a bit of cover there. The ball he would have worried about is the one he was banking two rails. Sometimes gives up a long rail bank. Uh, and that's why you kind of tend to stay away from that shot sometimes. It's kind of a last resort kind of a shot. You'd like to have gotten the cue ball down further that way. Josh doesn't have a chance to play this ball back over on this combination bank. And the cue ball. Scott's got a lot of room to kick behind them balls now, though. So You may see him play off of that. Was that the 12 ball that's near the 8 and 4? Going back into the 9, bring the cue ball round table. Okay, he's kicking. That's a lot of spin, it sounded like. like to me, it sounded like a lot, a lot of spin. Way too much. It's pretty surprising he didn't look to kick three rails more than... Okay, this combination obviously plays. And I think all them balls play from the top there. 14 ball, I think that's the one he would have wanted to get on, but this will work. He'll just draw over for the three. That'll open up the 14 if it doesn't go. This is where Josh is so impressive, especially at such a young age. Really kind of gets it. One of the best at stunning the ball, really, I've ever seen, and plays a, a lot more stun shots than most, most do, at this level anyways. But he plays it so cleanly. Some playing for one, just a tire match. We're going to have a hill hill match. And maybe the three railer had him cut off, but if not, I like using maybe the side rail for this shot more. Oh, he hit it really nice that time. Looked like it anyways. Yeah, this is the shot I kind of like better. Usually gauge that one a bit better just because it's more of a natural hit rather than uh, trying to gauge the spin and the speed at the same time like the one he sold out on. That sounded better. Yeah, that's the one that you would normally practice a bit more. That two-reeler. This is why it's so important to to win the lag is not only any race you play, but especially here at the Derby. Race the three in the banks and the one pocket. So winning the, those first games and sometimes here in these hill hill situations, of course you want to be the one breaking the balls. mentioned it earlier about the time we're approaching right at an hour hour long on our match and, you know filler had to talk to himself of course these guys are all pros and they'll sit there and take as much time as it as it's needed to try and win a match and fight 
But if he had to talk to himself prior and say, man, I don't mind winning quick. Uh, quick is probably favors Filler to win a little more often than, than a longer match would. Okay, he's looking at something pretty quick here. Is he going to elevate and try and stick him up in the balls there? what he does here. He's looking at the top of the stack or something. Didn't really get much on his side. That was a big part of the shot. Okay. Scott. Knowing it's Hill Hill situation. See how tight he plays his first shot. Ooh. Went ahead and shook him around a little bit. Actually turned out pretty nice overall. Does he have a two railer on the two railer on the nine here though to slide behind the ball? Oh, I think he does. This could be a game winning shot here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think it goes. I think it's tight with the two ball up the table there coming off that second rail, but I think it I think it does go. Uh oh. Okay, so really was going for the make there. Could have played it more of a pocket speed trying to, to possibly trap Scott. Scott'll put Josh now on the back of the balls on the low rail. Wanted him squeezed on that ball. Didn't want to let him see that one. The reason being is now there's another two railer that could cost uh, Scott maybe the game. Oh, two railer on the seven as well. That's a nice place he put the cue ball, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you that. This guy's going to try and get him up behind these balls. Pretty good. Yeah, can Filler shoot at some double up shot here on a long rather on the two, possibly? Put a lot of pressure on Scott, leaving him doubled up on the three and the nine, or maybe just a thin cut back cut on the on the one ball. Ooh. Scott's got to be really careful here. You know, he didn't want to leave him the one at all. If he leaves him the one, it could be trouble. I did real nice. Real nice. Well, this is Hill Hill, and somebody's got to take a loss here. But this is round two, and both guys came into this match undefeated, so I'm assuming whoever takes the loss will rebuy. Or did rebuy. <laughs> Maybe that's a better way to say it. Josh is not too happy with the situation. He's going to have to kick out of this and take a few shots to get out of it. Kick up behind the one. Uh, just one rail between you know the one and the twelve. Just land the cue over there on the long rail, just below the nine. Trying to use the one to where Scott maybe has to come off the one to put him back in that same place he's at now.
Yeah, something like this is all he's got, really. Well, he's trying to hit the one. Well, that's a nice shot, but dangerous sometimes, though. Scott can come off that ball. He's going to look at cutting this ball here. Probably just come off of this 15 ball, slide back over. And he's just going to soft kick. He wants to make sure he gets him up underneath these balls. Now Josh can go to the upper left hand corner somehow. If he can do that, he's got business. Oh, he came straight over. Pretty nice hit, I'll tell you. Pretty nice shot. Scott gave him a little window, I think, to get at that 12 ball. Maybe not. Yeah, he can definitely get at it. Now, what he can do with it is two different things. But he can certainly go to the rail and back behind the, uh, the, the two balls that he's near. Yeah, I was wondering about that one. Worked out, I think. Like he can do something with this 14 ball, maybe playing it off the three and putting them up behind that seven. The nine and the one has it to where nothing really banks, I don't think. Scott could bang this 11 away pretty easily and play an up table game, feeling like he's a little the favorite if they go up table. Looks like that's what he's what he's thinking. A little right-handed. Josh is going to remove some balls. It looks like. Scott's just going to move this 15-5 up the table. Nice cue ball control. Always important to try and leave him near the rail with the cue ball or on a ball. Not too many open cue balls in this game of one pocket. And I've got to be careful here. Let too much speed. Let too much speed. I don't know about too much, but Freezer might consider banking at this and drawing up into that that 15 ball there, that other strike. I mean, hard for Filler to get a ton of balls here. Uh, and if, I think you can hit it well enough. Yeah. He didn't even have, that was one heck of a shot. He made it look easy, but he didn't even have to go up into that 14, 15 ball, excuse me. So now, two two in games, one apiece in the ball count.
Okay, one a little angle. I think he got it. He's close to the ball, too, so we'll see if he draws back for the two and the four or if he tries to slide over for the three. If he had a lot of angle, he'd have to go for the three, but otherwise he could maybe try and create something with the two and four. Okay, he just went for the three. Making sure... Ooh! Wow, that's too much. Okay, looking at the rail first. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's giving up a bank here. He's got to really spin it to get out of the kiss with a lot of inside English, but I think I'm telling Josh to go for this if, uh, if I was in this corner coaching him. Yeah. Tell him, do your thing. Knock that in. I think the four goes. Hits the ball so clean to the pocket. Could you really ever pass on um, telling him to shoot at anything, really? I'm not sure if he can get shape. Oh, he did. Well, now he can shoot that one and pull back for shape on the one he originally wanted, the, the 13. Maybe that's the 11 ball, but shoot this 10 off. Looks like he's going to follow his ball to a little bit of safe. Oh, he missed one. That would have been a big ball there. Five to three. Now only four to three, and he's given up a cross corner. Big shot for Scott here because he's not going to roll it, I don't believe. it well. He's got a pretty free look. Not free look here, but one you want, kind of want to shoot at. And you could move off the six and the nine, I guess, and move the cue ball around table or something, but you wouldn't want to tear, tear that 513 open for Josh. So, I think you play at this. Scott taking a bit more time. Getting into position. Pretty good speed. I think he's left a bank shot here, maybe. It's close. But he's got to spin it, that's for sure. He's going to do anything with it. So again, all knotted up. Two games apiece, four balls apiece. Okay, that's a pretty good touch. Now, did he give him this little tight long railer? I think it is playable. Has to be hit very, very well. Scott's a guy that really has it all when it comes to this game of one pocket, really most pool games, but really, really excels, one of the best in the world. Nah, it's going to hurt there because, you know, Filler, he may be attacking either with this cross corner bank on the 11 or the ball that's coming on the spot. I think he'll slow roll it. I think he'll try and cannon into the 11 with the cue ball. Maybe go by it. Oh, he did kind of slow roll it. It's interesting to me. I thought he would go ahead and shoot that a little bit. Give it a little more effort on trying to make it. I know you don't want to give up two, but a lot of times you just don't make the ball very often at all at that speed. Uh, 
Another one he's got to pop in a little bit. Don't want to roll it. Oh, he drew the ball for shape. Wow, great shot. Wow, that took some nerve there. Almost got a bad roll, and I think if he feels comfortable, he can come across for the shot on the one. Yeah. Aggressive here with the cue ball. Oh, he hit it perfect, absolutely perfect. Income one rail bumped the five open, I believe. And really, it's kind of the way you want to shoot the shot, anyways. Uh, don't think you can roll it with the scratch being there. Game winner here. Oh, he did roll it. He did roll it. I oh, hit it great. And he got him a one rail bank on the six, so that was definitely a decent way to shoot it. Uh, not opening the 513 and still ha being able to play shape. That's that's the beautiful way of the way he kept the way he decided to slow roll the ball. Got to go for this. This is one uh, seems like when you are trying to end matches, you make this one a little more often. I overcut that one. Hit pretty well, but the cue ball okay. Yes, it is. I think he still wants the two real kick behind the six, even though he is corner hooked. At, if, if he is corner hooked, I think you still want to do that. I want to take a chance opening balls up, and it's a pretty reasonable kick shot, meaning you got a lot of room for air. Okay, Josh really trying to get something going towards his pocket, and there's just really not much there. Almost could three rail the 13, but looks close to a kiss. And I think this maybe the six is in the way, anyways. Eh, maybe not. Oh, oh, I was gonna say he's got to watch out for the kiss. So Freezer's got a shot here now. He can draw this. He can roll this. He can shoot it uh, if he draws it with more speed. That way, if he misses, maybe he gets out of dodge. Looks like he's just gonna slow roll it towards the hole, though. So could give up a bank, but most likely not. Well, there you go. Scott Frost defeats Josh Filler in the second round at the Derby 2020. Diamond Bayard Products and Bayard Shopping Network. Thank you very much. Real Burden Productions. Jeremy Jones and... Scott put on a pretty good performance there. Trailed early, and I was pretty impressed with Josh as well. I think Josh sticks to it on the one pocket. He's going to be just fine. And, uh, anyways, thank you. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen.